So you all, I'm going to ask a lot of questions today. And I'm going to give you a lot of information. Are you ready? So here are the questions. Number one, um, what does a person look like at your organization or any organization that you've ever been with? What does a person look like who has resigned and stayed in place? Have you seen that before? Um, that they're engaged, but they're not engaged. What does a person, what, how would you describe that person in one, in one word? Let's talk, come on. And, and online, there's several hundred people watching online. Join us and, and we'll share that too. What's it look like? Unmotivated. Unmotivated, okay. You said that with great enthusiasm. <laughs> Disconnected, who else? Discouraged. Discouraged. Troublesome. Troublesome. Motion. Just, going through the motions. Just going through the motions. Yes, sir. Placid. Say that again. Placid. Placid. Those are big words. I'm from West Virginia, Chris. Okay. Yes. Under the radar. Under the radar. Okay. Not taking risks. Yes. Waiting to be fired. Waiting to be fired. That's a good one. Well, excellent. Joel, yeah. good to see you. Who else? Yeah, we have some online too. Uh, autopilot, quiet, aloof, complacent, grumpy, unhappy, negative. Well, we've laid it out today. We're all done. <laughs> wow. Over here. Yes, sir. Culture killer. Man, you guys are awesome. Yes, sir. Victim, wow. Anybody else? Yes. Underachieving. Underachieving. Do you see how quick that you guys could describe that? The impact of someone who's disengaged, who wants other people to think they're engaged, has an incredible toxic impact upon a culture. Would you agree with that? And what we're describing is what this new term, it is an old reality, it's a cute term, it's a buzz right now, but it's always existed, and it's called quiet quitting. Quiet quitting is someone who has quit, but doesn't have the courage to take responsibility for their decisions to quit. They want, they want the paycheck, without the responsibility. They'll do the bare minimum and they know how to toe the line. And by the way, Abby, you've been a great um, uh, volleyball coach. Have you ever seen someone on your team who quietly quit? Yes. What do they look like? All, all of these words, potty, waddy, poopy face. Potty, waddy, poopy face. That's a new <laughs> one. Okay. <laughs> Potty, what? That's, she's from UW uh, Green Bay, uh, but you learned that uh, when you were in the SEC, right? <laughs> Potty, waddy, poopy face. That is a great term. And you know what? Here's the reality. You know what it looks like. Um, so what I want to do is, is I want to give you, I want to share with you 10 signs of a quiet quitter. Amazingly, you guys have already figured out most of them. Number one, they're not happy. I call them a walking Eeyore. They are negative to other people. Um, quiet quitters never lift up a room. Quiet quitters never lift up a room. And if you cannot provide lift, you're not a leader. One of the marks of a leader is that you provide lift for whatever team that you're in. Um, and at the same time, um, you're negative to teammates. And you're a pro at, at, at whispering and murmuring uh, and saying it just under the radar. So you're not, uh, you're not exposed. 
Second one, um, they're not happy. Second one is they do, they do not encourage teammates. Third is they are resistant to feedback. In fact, if you give them feedback, they are ticked off. How dare you? Uh, they give you, uh, they are great at gaslighting, making you feel that your observations are way off and they'll make you feel stupid while you're talking to them. Um, number four, they are caught up in the game of comparison. They have an entitled mentality that they're always upset that someone gets paid more than they do. It doesn't matter whether they're being paid fairly or not. It doesn't matter whether your employer is honoring his or her commitments. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're being paid a competitive wage that is appropriate for the market. You're always comparing yourself to other people. Always comparing what you don't have and what they don't have, and therefore, I'm a victim. I'm misunderstood. I'm mistreated. Um, and so, a fifth one. Just like what I said, I see them, they see themselves as a victim, mistreated, misunderstood, ignored, and for not having their needs met. These are folks who, who think that the role of the organization they are a part of is to meet their needs. Not to be a giver, but to be a taker. Uh, here's another one. They are not connected to purpose. They are not connected to purpose. You've got an entire team that is coming together. They're subjugating their egos uh, around um, a, a greater purpose, greater than they are. And, and lives are being impacted. People are being, uh, people are being changed and, and because of what you, are, uh, what you are offering. And you're loving coming to work. And a quiet quitter could care less about purpose. A quiet quitter is only there for one reason. And what is it? I need the paycheck. Um, and so, and by the way, there are people who come to work mainly because of a paycheck who do their very best work. There are people who come to work that work is not a source of meaning for them. But by golly, they're responsible. And they do what they're told. They don't create drama. They're all in those eight hours while they're there. And they go home to their family because they want work-life balance. There is absolute, that is a strength. So I'm not talking about, uh, I'm not talking about someone who has a life outside of work. With me? Now, and so, um, Here's another one, number seven. They undermine leadership behind their back. They'll talk quietly to everyone else except to the leader's face. Oh, it is dangerous to put a quiet quitter in an office with two other people. Why? What will happen? Gossip. Gossip all the little things that, you're, that are going on, and they have a subculture all by themselves. Have you ever seen that? And so that's another one. Um, they can become cancerous very quickly. Quiet quitters can become cancerous very quickly. Also, number nine, they are caught up with what's wrong and they ignore all the things that are going well. They are caught up in seeing what's wrong, and they're the folks that will say, if I owned this company, if I had this company, I can't believe you're doing this. If I were school superintendent, they're the ones who know everybody's job better than everybody else who's doing the job. And then, number 10, they're quick to blame. They are quick to blame. They, if, if they are not responsible for their state of mind, 
They are not responsible for any of their dissatisfaction. It is their finger goes one way. What is it? It goes this way. That's a quiet quitter. And you all have already demonstrated it has a huge impact. 